holy cow, I'm 26 years old, my son was just born, I just got married, and I'm gonna die. There's so much in my life that I have to live for still. When I first fell on the ground, everyone came in, obviously, like it was a whirlwind of emotions, and I had no use in my left side of my body at all. Couldn't even clench my fist. It was grade four glioblastoma. It just looked like a circle in my head. They said it was the size of a lemon. When I met Avery and his wife, and we talked about the diagnosis and the implications and, you know, generally speaking, the poor prognosis. What makes this disease difficult is the lack of treatment options that are available or included as part of standard of care. We are in the room with Dr. Bod. This is probably our second or third visit at Roswell. So he found out it was a glioblastoma. What's the prognosis? Dr. Bod said, fair question. Um, and he told us, I think it was 12 to, 12 to 16 months. World shatters when you find out it's the, the one that the other oncologist always said, we don't want it to be that. Uh, this is not a cancer we typically talk about cure. We talk about control. Those little things that once would bother the heck out of you, it's just kind of like, well, it changes your mindset and it changes your perspective on a lot of things. The treatments for glios have been kind of the same for a long time. It's just the standard of care is what they call it. And he talked about this clinical trial and I was like, oh yeah, I mean, whatever I can do to have another tool in the box, I guess, to help fight this. I mean, why not? One of the advantages uh, of Roswell Park is that we're able to offer cutting edge uh, treatments to our patients uh, in their own backyard. That means we can offer hope uh, to patients like Avery. And knowing that when your doctor tells you it's okay to have hope, that he's not just trying to butter you up because we have something, we have a fighting chance, and that's everything. Those of us in laboratories researching immunotherapy had always seen a potential for immunotherapy at the forefront of cancer therapy. About 10 years ago, we became interested in a molecule called Survivant, which is present in almost all glioblastoma, and trying to target it with vaccines and other means to kill those glioblastoma cells that remain after surgery. We were looking towards something that we could train uh, the body's own immune system educate it with a vaccine or a cell type injection to teach it how to target uh, tumor cells that were forming through the body. It stimulates the body to respond against a tumor and to create white blood cells that attack uh, tumor cells. The hospital that he's receiving his care at is the hospital that created the clinical trial. They're the reason that Avery has a fighting chance and they're the reason that Avery will be here to watch Teddy grow up because we have Roswell in our corner and that's everything. It came right out of the labs at Roswell Park. It could treat cells in a cancer dish and it could do it really, really well in the lab. It was one of those clear signals that this drug needs to go somewhere. He gives me my husband. So, because people that are so, um, selfless and kind and willing to help. It gives us more time and more memories, so. Four, five, six years later, we're seeing almost routinely long-lived glioblastoma patients. It is the, the culmination of years of effort and a lot of money and time spent, and particularly the help of the community in getting this going. We wouldn't be at this point at all without people riding bicycles. We just can't thank everyone enough for doing the ride for Roswell and raising the money to fund things like Cervaxim. It gives Avery a fighting chance to watch Teddy grow up. Without those funds, this just doesn't happen. And without the Alliance, the Cervaxim vaccine probably wouldn't exist. It's awesome that these people are willing to go out there and raise this money for Roswell. To all those who donate and support research at Roswell Park, thank you. Thank you.